Hi right, guys and good morning. Tuesday the 1st of October, just gone 8 o'clock here in London and just like that the uh, third quarter is done, the month is done and we are into the final stretch, the home straight uh, of what has been a uh, an interesting year so far but also just an interesting month just gone through and we'll have a look over the charts <clears throat> from yesterday but also the month uh, having a look at the potential outlook for the remaining three months of the year as well we'll have a look at uh, some of the stories from overnight and in what's been a relatively quiet uh, news driven evening I would say in the build-up to today's session of course China uh, away on holiday as well so that's gonna add to, to that a bit um, so we'll go through some of the, the headlines. As you can see on my right-hand side, the uh, the main one, if you like, for certainly for currency markets, you would say at the moment, would be the, the RBA cutting rates to record low of, of 0.75. That happened overnight, as expected. However, the Aussie did uh, continue to weaken into to early morning trade. So we'll have a, a quick look over the, the charts from, from yesterday. If uh, you remember during the briefing yesterday, we were talking about well, certainly oil and, and, and gold as they were coming to, to some quite interesting levels. I'm just going to bring oil into to picture here and we're talking about the, the importance of obviously the resistance up uh, around sort of mid 57s but also this potential trend line at the time that started from the beginning of August uh, and then we had that, that breakthrough yesterday. So certainly going into this month and more really for the rest of the week I would say just the break of that trend line is, is pretty key. Uh, bearish below and, and bullish uh, to an extent above I, I would say and you can see yesterday uh, putting this on to even a 60 minute time frame that the first real test we had of it again coming around two o'clock the breakthrough into yesterday evening and we had a, a strong move lower quick dollar push to the downside since then we have recovered a touch uh, but commodities yesterday were getting a, getting a bit of a kick I actually did receive a, a text from my my friend, the one that was in silver, I'm sure if you listen to the briefing you'll know, and um, you were saying uh, it's not looking good, how silver needs to stay above 17 or this trade's not looking too good. Another commodity that came under pressure uh, was gold and it seemed that the whole uh, Twitter sphere, financial anyway, was looking at, at gold and if it breaks this level, go short and it broke the level came back to retest and you can see the move to the downside was was uh, was pretty big uh, and we're now trading down at 14.69 14.92 was the level we were talking about you can just see and this is just a 60 minute but you can see just how important that whole area was putting it onto that 240 and you can see even more so a break of that and we were saying you could get a uh, get a move down towards 66 I still don't think that's off the cards obviously not too far well there we go we, we touched it in uh, in early morning trade so perfect uh, technicals there working uh, in, in correlation with a bit of a stronger dollar reaching a two-year high yesterday obviously weighing on things as well I think it's worth saying uh, with, with gold and, and other commodities as well that have been pricing in obviously a much weaker US dollar and more dovish Fed uh, an unwind of that means that we do have to have a bit of repricing and of course gold which had pushed higher due to trade concerns over the weekend well uh, it does seem that that situation for now anyway is slightly better uh, and just having a look at stocks you can see uh, my headline uh, to the downside of the, of the screen just making sure uh, or well on the other side anyway you can see stocks recover from obviously the shaky August that we did have to have the uh, the biggest year-to-date gain in more than 20 years obviously that third quarter so uh, big push higher in stocks now again not far from that all-time high that we uh, we had back in uh, well the 13th and just putting this on a 60 minute you know a, a decent ends the week and we, we could almost be there uh, as well so keeping a, a close eye on that level around 30 25 obviously 3,000 to the upside remains a, a key level we can see just the breakdown area that we had back on the 24 uh, as well uh, just seeing a couple of comments in the chat regarding cable let's have a quick look over to see what uh, is going on there with the pound just having a little push to the upside there and having a look if there's any stories that come through it uh, doesn't seem so what we um well anyway yeah i'll keep uh, an eye out for that and guys let me know if uh, there is any comments um for the pound 
Before we, we go over to uh, the main headlines from Australia, may as well talk about the, the pound now, just as it is moving. Uh, in terms of new headlines, and, and certainly, well, actually, if we, we go through the chart yesterday, we had a, a bit of a, a push to the upside in the afternoon, and a couple of the guys who was with uh, the stage one guys of the, the program yesterday, and they were saying, what's happening, what's happening? And there wasn't really anything on, on the wires for this push above, so it seemed to be more technical, and since then we have snapped back. Um, however, uh, just uh, at the time, there's a couple of comments saying that uh, from ITV's Peston saying that Boris Johnson is going to put together this uh, new proposal on Wednesday and, is, and he is expecting good news. However, overnight, uh, Ireland have, have quickly downplayed that. Uh, however, a couple of uh, comments look like they're just coming through now. Let me just click. Uh, on there, PM tells Radio 4 that there will absolutely not be a hard border away from the Northern Ireland border. That's not what we are proposing at all. He says UK post-Brexit must have a singles, single customs territory. Uh, so yeah, it seems like the, the markets are liking that. Uh, but as with ever for the pound, you've got to be careful. Uh, just as you think it may be going one way, a comment can come back the other. Other comments from overnight regarding the pound, and I was just having a, a look at these just before coming on. Obviously, there was a, a decent little read on uh, on the BBC, just talking about uh, the detailed plan, or supposedly uh, that he's going to be releasing uh, on Wednesday. Uh, obviously, after the the Tory uh, party uh, the conference, and it's uh, yeah, this this is the comment here. But Ireland's deputy prime minister Simon. Coveney said the plans were a non-starter, and that's really, you know, no no real surprise there. Uh, the pound, yes, you have a bit of a, a spike there, but it's it's a case of it's really going to have to wait through. Uh, the important dates, obviously, we're we're into October now, and uh, of course the 31st remains key, uh, not just for Mario Draghi, but of course the uh, the 31st of October, the Brexit deadline, Halloween. Uh, but before that, a couple of dates to to be aware of. Um, you've got the crucial EU summit on the 17th of October, so that's one to put in uh, the diary. Of course, Wednesday and Thursday this week, we're expected to maybe get more in the way of what this new deal proposal uh, could be. And, you know, I was speaking with, with Ant yesterday, and he was saying, of course, how Boris Johnson said, actually, if, uh, if they don't have a deal or leave on a no deal on the 31st of October, he is going to uh, continue as, as PM. I don't think there was many people... Uh, I thought he wouldn't, but it's obviously quite funny when he said, uh, you know, he'd rather be dead. It was a million to one. Um, and look where we are now. Um, kicking the can down the road uh, as such. Um, so, yeah, I mean, comments uh, from overnight, nothing really too new. Uh, the Telegraph reporting um, that the, the, the final uh, Brexit plan, well, we'll see if it's the final Brexit plan. Uh, to EU leaders uh, to be given in 24 hours uh, to be based on the creation of an all-Ireland economic zone which would allow agricultural and food products between, uh, to move between Ulster and Republic without checks at the border. Uh, further report stated that Britain is set to present the EU on Thursday, um, the text to EU on Thursday, whilst the Telegraph also noting that the formal text will be delivered at after the Tory party conference on Wednesday. So really, post-Wednesday, Thursday, we should be able to start to get uh, a few more headlines in regards to Brexit. Uh, so really today, uh, we'll come on to the data calendar. We do have some UK data out the manufacturing across the board today, uh, in the morning out of uh, Europe and, and UK, and then uh, the US in the afternoon. Uh, but really, I would say, for the pound anyway, uh, a case of just sort of waiting for the remainder of the week to, to really get uh, the, the main moves, uh, perhaps. Uh, overnight, the, if we bring in the Aussie dollar chart, you can see here uh, the classic, really, central bank move of the last couple of years. Basically, whenever you, know, you almost want to look at the, the one minute candle and then do the opposite. Um, here you can see we spiked higher to come back lower and now obviously trading down at uh, on the futures anyway at uh, at 67.23 lowering rates uh the rba as expected it must be said but now to to the record low of 0.75 uh, usual uh story of of blaming the global slowdown in growth even in a couple of brexit comments have been uh floated around by 
uh, Economist yesterday, which I find quite funny um, that uh, they want to put that in the mix. But uh, yeah, that uh, the unemployment situation, which has, has risen recently. Uh, and of course, they're saying that they may need to, to do another cut, this being at the beginning of next year. Uh, so again, we're going to have to start pricing that in. But this was really as expected, uh, I would say. Um, but of course, you know, if we have a look back, not just necessarily the quarter, but September uh, as a whole, um, you know, some of the, the headlines that were coming through, where's the mouse gone? Um, you know, the, the US dollar was, you know, now the strongest in two years, but also you had other central banks cutting. So the ECB finally uh, cut, obviously the, the Fed did as well. The pound, fine, we're gonna have to wait and see what happens with Brexit. Uh, and now the, the RBA following suit after a previous cut uh, in the, uh, the beginning of the, the summer. Uh, so as expected, and, and I think with, with this market, uh, we can expect more downside. I think anyone that is betting against the dollar now is probably still quite unwise. I know we're on a two year uh, high, but I mean, you just have to look at Euro dollar over the last year. Whenever you get a push higher, what a good opportunity is to sell. Uh, and uh, with the Aussie dollar, uh, we are obviously under pressure. Of course, a really good situation in trade uh, could help. Uh, other uh, sort of hindrances listed were due to obviously the trade war and, and the China Hong Kong situation uh, as well, and some commodities uh, as well that uh, were perhaps struggling a bit. But uh, yeah, Aussie dollar come under pressure overnight, uh, and we saw that that push lower. Uh, just to go over the uh, the S and P. So as I said ended quarter three with the biggest year-to-date gain since 1997 which uh, I'm sure Donald Trump will be happy about and he'll be tweeting about that uh, uh, today finishing the quarter up just however um, and we are of course near those all-time highs European shares uh, followed suit and you know actually I, I was looking at this you know, I wasn't bringing the euro stocks here and looking at, at it on a, a quarter to quarter basis and one uh, longer term trade that I am really interested in at some point is Eurostox to eventually, and I'm talking real long term here, is, is to get us up to those highs that we had, well, at least here looking around 2007. I mean, you know, super long term uh, on the millennium, the beginning of the millennium, why not? But we are just starting to come up to the top end of the last few years. You can see it's probably worth getting a bit of a, a trend line on this now, and this is looking on the quarter. Uh, by quarter basis and, and you know maybe it's not going to be for quite some time but a real break out of this area and, and it's got to play catch up um, and then you know looking to, towards this area anyway I'll, you know, I'll maybe go into a bit more detail about this in, in, uh, in due course but you know while you've got US stocks on obviously all time highs and you know even the DAX is, is not really looking like this we're just bringing the DAX here now you can see obviously up near it well Give a, to give or take a few quarters back to, to 2018 January on its all-time high, you can see the euro stocks is completely different situation. So at some point, I do believe that's going to be a good opportunity. Uh, and really, for me, uh, technically, I'll just be waiting for that confirmation of a bit of a breakout of this whole zone. Uh, and obviously, it remains to be seen whether that can happen. But third quarter in a row uh, for euro stocks to the upside. Just bringing in that S&P chart here. You can see, obviously, near that all-time high and that's the the third quarter to the upside and you can see just how many little red candles uh, there are nasdaq which was on the uh, the brink yesterday just about finishing to the upside if you remember literally this time yesterday we were talking about the nasdaq being red for the quarter well good day yesterday and it finished it up and obviously the dow jones likewise all near their all-time highs uh, as well so really in, in summary of certainly September we had the the repo rate situation which seemed to panic markets for a week we had the Saudi and Iran situation uh, you have you had rate cuts global slowdown trade wars which led to trade concessions and a strong dollar but US stocks are near all-time highs don't bet against stocks at the moment. And of course, with election year next year, we said yesterday, October, historically the year before election is a very good month for stocks. Are we about to see another push to all time highs? I'd be interested to see what you guys think. Uh, of course, as, as you all know, uh, this time next year, I do believe US stocks are gonna be on the all time highs uh, anyway.
other headlines from overnight relatively limited it has to be said um you know i was just having a, a read over the uh, the eu morning call and and really it's uh, obviously with the holiday and the slow starts of the week bigger things to come later on that's not all too surprising uh, obviously equities recovered overnight you had the rba cut as we mentioned a couple of brexit headlines but it's going to be choppy really until wednesday thursday uh, um, it's worth looking and you know you can see looking ahead the calendar actually is, is not a bad one so while maybe new headlines aren't going to be the immediate driver the calendar today absolutely could uh, be that if we have a, a quick run through obviously we've had the the rate cut already uh, 855 we've got german manufacturing which has obviously been poor for quite some time uh, as EU and the UK has as well. All under 50, even the high end of the ranges for all of those are below that magic 50 number. Uh, so, you know, if we were to get uh, anywhere near those 50s, what a good reaction you would see. But at the moment, the situation is not good uh, this side of the pond. Uh, as we go into the afternoon, we've got Canadian GDP expected month on month 0.1. We've then got the US uh, manufacturing uh, numbers, which for once uh, looking to come in above 50. 49.1, obviously that was the lowest figure we had for quite some time uh, last month. So September's reading looking to be a, uh, a beat month on month uh, and looking to come in at 50.4. I mean, it just confirms the situation that the US is in a better place than, than other markets, uh, other you know currencies and countries at the moment. And I, I think you've got to expect the, the US dollar to, to continue to strengthen. You know, I said we'll have a look at the, the chart certainly on on that sort of monthly outlook, uh, and if we have a look at you know the euro dollar, I'm just going to put this on the daily chart, and you can see obviously we're at that year year low at the moment. You know what's going to stop us now? And if I just drag this really longer term, and you know I'm going to put this on a weekly chart now. You now what's really going to stop us getting down to you know some of these levels? You know from 2017. Look at you know this is. You know, whenever we have that, those euro pushes, and you know, I like to talk about those trend lines that break, and we get a further move to the downside. I, you know, I'm, I feel pretty confident that the euro is is going to continue to to move to the downside. There's been a couple of stories over the last couple of days how Lagarde is against what Mario Draghi's just done, but you know, I mean, look at the reaction to to the market. Still, euro weakness. The dollar expected to to strengthen again. Yes, there'll be little pullbacks in this case to the upside. Uh, but I think we'll we'll get a, a decent push continued anyway uh, uh, for for the um, for for the euro. So you know, continued here. Certainly, from opportunity wise, be looking uh, you know over the next couple of days uh, at these previous lows that we had back in September. Um, we've already had a retracement to there, and it's worked. But that's really a ceiling, I think, going forward. The pound is a tricky one because Brexit is is going to drive things here. Last few days, you can see we have been drifting down uh, again. An interesting market that I'm sort of waiting for is the euro pound, and this is here looking on that daily chart. We didn't uh, quite get up to. I had orders waiting for a, for a short. You can see just the importance of this level. Didn't quite come in I wasn't obviously in the office last week so wasn't actively looking at it um, you could argue I probably should have got in there but uh, uh, now the idea being just waiting to see can we get a confirmed break below this it's not the greatest trend line but the idea being that we can just get a continuation below this trend here and look for that real breakdown to the upside of course with Brexit we could have a, a day below and then one spike and we're, we're back above uh, that area but certainly remains quite a, an interesting market uh, for me anyway looking for the pound to strengthen uh, and the euro to, to weaken there S&P got a favor I think uh, you know push to the upside but trade will be uh, the main story I still think there's going to be a, a good buy the dip opportunity for stocks um, I do think you know this time next year we're going to be an all-time highs but I don't think it's going to be a slow grind to the upside speaking of slow grinds obviously with the uh, the Chinese holiday uh, what stocks love the most is uh, a, a low volume day where it can just grind and grind higher finishing up 0.5% yesterday uh, if we can clear this area around 3000 I think uh, all time highs become a bit of a formality uh, however it is a key resistance point um, to, to, to bear in mind oil obviously with that trend line break now you know I would be looking for uh, that to uh, continue to the downside. Not 
quite know what's going on here. The oil chart looking quite funky. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. I was wondering what that gap was and completely forgot about the Saudi situation. So yeah, break of this trend line, I, I, I think we can continue to come lower. Uh, overall, I, I do see oil uh, improving into the back end of the year, but just from a sentiment point of view, the break of this trend line is key. Just like the break of this whole area for gold is massive as well. We've already hit that uh, that target, if you like, that you would have had in mind, and we're actually just testing it again now. Gold obviously coming under significant pressure. Dollar again near that, uh, that two-year high uh, as well. So overall, headlines from overnight, Australia cut rates, stocks recover, gold and oil under pressure technically as well because of this uh, dollar strength. Chinese holidays, some manufacturing data out in the morning. Uh, and then a couple of Brexit headlines, but I would kind of just wait and see uh, for the pound really for the rest of the week. As usual, any questions, obviously, please uh, do let us know. Be on the mic throughout the, uh, the day. Uh, you know, things are starting to move a bit, but I think that the main moves are going to come Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. <coughs>